Hello everyone, this is Gail, and today I am going to show you how to make um, a type of African fabric called mud cloth. Now mud cloth is uh, something that the African women used to make, or they probably still do, and they would take plant juice and mud and dye their cotton fabrics with it. So I thought I would start off and see, you know, if I can come up with some things that would resemble mud cloth. And you can look it up. Um, there's, if you just look, if you just Google mud cloth or African mud cloth, you'll see lots of different pictures. But one thing that I noticed in looking at the natural mud cloth is that the white was not really a white white. So it's sort of, it's, you know, the cloth, the white cotton that we get is pretty much bleached. So when the natural cotton that the people in Africa have, their white cotton fabric, is not really a white white. So I have cut up some little pieces of ecru. This is one section, one section off of a block. And I may not use but one piece of it. But anyway, I took that one section. I divided it into four pieces. And I am going to mix it with my white one block at a time. And just see, because I don't want it to turn beige. I just want the white to be a little off-white. So let me go to my pasta machine and blend this, and I'll be back. Okay, I think just that one little block of ecru is going to give me the color I want. I don't know if you can see the difference between the white white and this is just a little off white. And I think that's exactly the color I wanted. So let me put my white clay. I don't do this with all my clays, but I like to keep my white into one of the snack size baggies. This is an 8 ounce package. And I don't even have to close it because it's, it's still wrapped in the other. But all I needed was one little skinny slice off of a block of ecru clay. So now I am done with the ecru. And now let's see what we can do. I'm going to make... Well, first off, this is rolled to a number three. Let me get, get this back to the thickest setting of my pasta machine. And just to make it easier, I'm going to take some square cutters. And I'm going to get my Sculpey cutters out. I keep them in a, one of these uh, picture storage boxes that you can get at Michael's. When you get them on sale, they're very economical. I'm going to use my medium square and I think to make it easier let me just because I want this to be the double thickness but I didn't want to fold all of my clay to a double thickness and let me do the same thing with the black the black doesn't matter I can get that done so I'm going to cut a double thickness of the ecru and a double thickness of the black and I'm going to stack these And then I'm going to cut it in half. And now you notice I'm making pretty small canes. I don't need a lot of cane. But I'm going to cut this in half. And I've changed my layout here. I took my um, Alright, let me back up a bit. I have a glass mat here that has a grid on it. And I use the um, See, I've got a jar opener somewhere but there's this cloth 
that's the rubberized cloth you can see it over here the rubberized cloth and I had that under this and those little dots that are in the rubberized cloth through this grid just made it a really terribly busy uh, you can see over here this is where they are see how busy this is over here and it made it difficult to see my uh, my, my work when I was doing it but at the same time that also gave made me lose the use of my grid so I had a I've got a ruler under here mainly just for the numbers because this this has the numbers on the grid coming this way but the one the side that has the numbers on the grid coming this way is up at that end and for me to keep my little tool area on the right side because I'm right-handed it meant I lost the use of that so I just put a little ruler here but what I did is I took a piece of white uh, 12 by 12 scrapbook paper and sat it underneath the glass mat and did away with my white tile and I'm gonna see how this works so if you can if this interferes with your vision let me know um, you know, I don't want to do anything that's going to make it worse for you guys. And I was hoping this might make it better for both of us. So anyway, so I'm going to put this on my grid. And this is just a little over an inch. So I'm going to go just a little over a half inch. And cut. And I'm just going to stack this. And you can see this is a stripe cane. And I'm going to slice it. Let me come in a little bit. But if I cut this in half, And flip it upside down. It's a little warm in here today and it's my clay is squishing. Turn it upside down so that you match up like this. You end up with a checkerboard cane. If you take this and cut this in half again, and again you have to flip it so that you get your ecru next to your black. I didn't cut this in half very well. Let me just slice this off so it... But there is a checkerboard cane. And I'm going to try to make all these the same size. We'll see how successful I am. Now this time I'm going to cut two of the white and this is at the thickest setting of the pasta machine and two of the black which is also at the thickest setting of the pasta machine and I'm going to alternate these to make a stripe cane But I never have claimed to be precise. And I'll just trim all four sides since I seem to have be really off track. And 
Now what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to cut this in half. This should be about an inch. It is. Cut this in half and stack it. And what I'm going to do with this one is just stretch it out a little bit. Doesn't matter if these get a little bit smaller. So now we have a checkerboard cane and a stripe cane. Now the next thing I want to do, and I probably need to run this through the pasta machine. Let me cut off this wonky end. And again, this is at the thickest setting. Let me do this one. And what I'm going to do here is I'm cutting off my bottom. I'm going to line it up on my grid and I'm going to cut along my inch line here and even with help I get it a little crooked and I'm going to cut on this one. I'm just going to make this an inch wide And I'm going to do the same thing with my white. I'm going to cut it on this inch line here. And you see this line here is even with this line here, so I'm going to try to line this up straight this time. And cut a straight line. And come over to this inch. And cut a straight line. And let's see if I line this up well enough. Okay, so now we have a black piece and a white piece rolled to the thickest setting of the pasta machine and they're the same size and I'm going to lay one on top of the other and I stretched it a little bit so I need to trim a little bit of the black off. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it over so that the white is on the bottom and I'm going to start rolling a spiral cane. It's a little hard to do with it this thick, but I want, since these are thick colors, I want the spiral to be a thick color. There's our spiral, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to push this white down so that you don't see any black there. And there is our spiral. So we've got those, and I'm going to now do a bullseye. See, these are all very simple beginner canes. Actually, I don't need this to go through the pasta machine. I just need to make a big plug out of it. Maybe 
Maybe I should roll it through the pasta machine because I can tell by the way it feels that there's air in there somewhere. So let me just run it through the pasta machine real quick. And cut a flat edge and just start rolling it into a log. And there's a piece where the air was. I can see a little air bubble right there. Once you get to working with polymer clay, you will notice the um, changes in the way it feels under certain conditions. I'm going to do the same thing here as I did with the spiral. I'm just going to mash down that white, but it doesn't really matter. It's not to cover up a color. It's just to make the plug. All right, and I'm going to take my black, all my pieces, and I'm going to roll this through the pasta machine again at the thickest setting. So far, everything is done at the thickest setting, but when I finish with this, I'm going to roll a, the black in a different setting. So what I want to do here, I want to cut a straight edge. May as well cut that off. That's a little wonky edge anyway. I'm going to lay this on here. Well, maybe I better not do that because this looks like it's not going to be very straight here. Cut the black. And I'm not even going to trim the end until I get to it. But just slowly roll your white plug in the black. Roll it over. And can you see the mark that it leaves? See that little mark there? That's where I'll cut. Actually, I'll just barely on the inside of that. And what that does is it enables me to know that this will meet without overlapping. Just kind of roll this to seal that seam. And there are the four canes that we're going to use to make our mud cloth. Now I'm going to take the rest of this black. May as well use all of it. And because it's stacked up two and three layers high, I'm going to flatten it with a roller before I put it through my pasta machine. But now I'm going to go down. I'm going to roll it through it a number three. Then I'm going to go down to a number five. I'm going to get this as thin as I can. And I'm probably not going to need all of this clay. But I'm, I'm going to go down now to number seven. I know I can go to a number seven. And maybe that's thin enough. We have a use for this as we build our cane. All right, now the first thing we need to do is decide how we're going to arrange things. But first, let's take our plug. Before we start arranging things, let's take our plug and let's reduce it. 
And what we want to do is reduce this down to about a quarter of an inch. Before I get any further, I'm going to get my cane ends out from tinypandora.com. Be lost without these things. But I have to clean them off because I'm not real good at cleaning them when I finish using them. And we'll stick these on both ends. And then I'm going to reduce. Okay, I've rolled this out to a little more than 12 inches, and I'm going to trim off at 12 just to get rid of the little ends. But as you can see, using the cane ends, that's a very tiny piece that I'm losing. And I've got a tiny piece on each end. Actually, I didn't need to lose all that, but you can see this. Using the cane ends really keeps you from losing the majority of your cane. Now, before I go any further, I am going to cut this in half, which will be here at six inches. And I'm going to take my cane benders. Or actually, these are the. Um, sorry I forgot the name of them but I'm going to square up we'll turn these into a little bit of a square probably ought to use the smaller ones I'm so used to using the big ones I forget that I have smaller ones missing a square one, the medium size. I'm sure it's in this drawer because I have a habit of just throwing things in this drawer and not putting them back where they belong. So I'm sure it's in here somewhere. There it is. I knew it was in here. But I'm going to use the little ones and I'm not trying to reduce this I'm trying to just turn this into a little bit of a square, and it doesn't have to be a perfect square. Because when the Africans make these beads, these, this cloth, they aren't making perfect squares, but I do want it sort of in a square shape. The edges can still be a little rounded. Square pairs, that's what these are called. I knew the name would come to me. I'm really bad at remembering the names of things because I buy them to use for a particular thing and it works for me. So I got this one. It did stretch a little bit. But see how that's a little bit square, but not with sharp corners, which is exactly what I wanted. So let me do the same thing with this one. You can't do them both at the same time because these are these square pairs are only six inches long. 
So since I had, let me find my flat. I think I lost my flat piece. But since I had a 12 inch piece of clay, I could cut it in half and they fit in here fine. Turn this while I've got it attached. There we go. I believe my camera has slipped. Sorry about that. I went to move my camera and I hit the off switch by mistake. So I had to turn it back on. This also helps to get it all the same size. So I'm going to leave this one stuck until I cut it. Since these are six inches. So now I have two six inch squares. And I'm going to lay it on my grid. And I'm going to cut these into one inch segments. I actually don't even mind that they're stuck together. Because that's what I'm going to end up doing anyway. So let me cut them in one inch segments. And trim that up even. And what I'm going to do, I might alternate these. One, one side looks a little bit bigger than the other. Actually, that evened it up pretty good. Always check your bottom also. Make sure the tops and the bottoms line up. make this into another cane and we may or may not use all of this we shall see depends on how things go together because it's a, a totally random thing anyway that is our bullseye cane that I reduced cut and put together. Now let's do the same thing with our swirl or a jelly roll. This, the technical name for this is a jelly roll. But again I'm going to fast forward the, the uh, tape, the camera so you don't have to sit and watch me reduce. But one thing I, w I do want to show you, and I tried to show you on the other one, but I know it's going to be fast forward, is I usually start by pinching the center and making like a waistline in the center. Then I push the ends up to meet the same, be the same um, diameter. Whoops, don't come off because that's I'm counting on you to not lose any of my cane. Then I turn it over and I do the other side and then I keep repeating this. After I get this to be the same size I will pinch another waist and do that until it's long enough that I can get it out on my table. So let me fast forward Okay, I've got this out to where it will come. See my wonky ends. I took it out a little soon because this clay was getting really sticky. So I took it off of these, off of the cane ends a little early. 
but I'm also going to cut this in one inch pieces. And you can see why it's so much easier to work on a grid than to try to lay out a ruler. So I hope this works well for you guys. And these I will try to get them kind of lined up in the same way. I'm not going to double these up. If you look at the swirl, just make sure the swirl is going in the same direction. And just line these up. Now we might break these into section so I might just put six and six together or maybe I'll put six and leave the others loose until I know exactly what I'm going to do. So now we've got these, those are our four things that we're going to work with. We've got the swirls, the checkerboard, the semi-squares, and a stripe cane. Now you notice these two I made the same size. And the reason for that was I wanted to maybe, let's see, they're the right size but the wrong direction. I need to squeeze this one in and pull it out this way. I've got the lines going in the wrong direction for what I wanted to do. But that is easy to remember because it's running to fix because it's polymer clay which is very forgiving. Okay, now this is where our black comes in, the thin black. And let me just cut off little pieces at a time because it's going to be very difficult to work with this big sheet that I've got here. So I'm just going to do a little piece at a time. And I'm going to take this end, the short end, and lay on it. And it's not to add color as much as it is to just add some separation. Trim this one off. You see that doesn't add a lot of color, but it will add a little bit of separation. So let's put these two together this way. Now, if your canes are not the same size, don't worry. You can trim them down. You can do all kinds of things. But I think this is going to work out just fine. Now, this one I planned on putting across here. And it looks like if I take off one, that might work. But I'm also going to put some separation on that one. Let me just set it over a little bit so I can trim all the way around instead of trying to line it up. Trim there and here. As it turns out, all that black I had that I rolled out to the number nine, or was it number seven, 
I'm only going to use one little square of it, so you don't need much. Actually, I used the wrong side. I probably don't need this black on this because the side that's going against this is going to be a black side. So this is a little bit wider, so just squeeze it. And you can slice this off. And don't throw this away. You can use this in another cane. Or maybe we'll add it somewhere else on this one. Actually, I don't know. I could put it here. Maybe line this up this way, and as you can see, it's taller because I'm I missed the one inch mark. Just make sure my spirals are going in the same direction, and I may do the same thing as I did this other half. So it's not going to be a lot to trim off. And there you go. There is some African mud cloth. Now if you wanted you could take some black and put up against here. So let's do that. Since I've got the black here, let's do that. And I may even wrap this around a little bit. If I've got it if this is wide enough. may not be quite wide enough, but maybe it will. Actually, if I move it down this way, it should work fine. Excuse my hair while I trim this. my little pieces of black well I trimmed it even after all I wasn't thinking I was going to leave a little bit of flap on each end to roll around like that I may be able to let me get here in the seam. After I smashed all of that clay, but luckily I have got plenty of this clay. And let's see, I need it about this wide. Lay this down in that seam between the two spirals and 
just come across here then I can cut this where it meets the black. Problem solved. But there you go. There is some African mud cloth. Now what you can do is you can reduce this down. Um, the easiest way to do that is to uh, let's see to use this for a while use the square pairs for a while till they get taller than this but as you just turn it and squeeze and turn it and squeeze until you make it smaller and you can take this you can turn it into beads you can turn it into a pendant there's so many things you could do but see how this is getting it's coming up this way and getting a little bit smaller this clay is also very sticky I'm not going to try to reduce it anymore. I'm losing my squares here on the end. I'll do the rest by hand. Let me get these squares back. Because the clay is very soft and I was trying to reduce it too quickly. But you know this is mud cloth. There should be a black separating that somewhere. I'll work on that. But this is your African mud cloth. This can this is just really an interesting thing for me because this looks very authentic because of the color. If I had used the white, it wouldn't have been quite as authentic looking. Just looking on the bottom side. The bottom side I didn't lose the squares. So maybe that will become my top. just reduce little by little try not to over reduce like I did and just use your fingers to reshape but there you go how about that you can also reverse your colors where I have white you could make that the black and make the, like in this one, if you look at it, the dominant color seems to be the white. If you reverse, you could leave this the same, leave this the same, but make this black in the center and white around the outside, then you will have an entirely different look. It will be like black mud cloth. So I hope you like this. I'm just going to play with this a little bit and get so you can see what I'm doing. But I, I enjoy things like this that are just a little bit different. And yet you took, or we took, very simple canes and made a very complicated looking cane out of it. So there you go. So come back next week and I will have another quilt square for you. Come back on Friday for my Friday frolics, and everybody have a great day. Enjoy your clay. Bye-bye. I just wanted to take a minute. I know I thought I was finished, but I wanted to show you what I did with this. I cut some slices. I have this slice that's pretty thick but it didn't slice evenly. It's thin on that side and thick on this side, and I don't know how to use that. And then this one got caught up behind my blade, so that one is useless. So I ended up with four squares that I cut, 
and I put them on my tile and evened them up. I took the back side of my blade and squared them up. I laid a where'd it go? I laid a piece of of uh, deli wrap or patty paper. I'll get a new one. I don't know where that one went. Just laid it over top and I burnished it really good in the seams to make sure it stuck together. And then I rolled over it with my roller because it was kind of uneven. And I turned it and I rolled and I turned it and I rolled. And you'll see because this will show you this side was a little bit thicker than the other pieces so it kind of came out but all you need to do is just take your blade and straighten it back up and there is like it's like a piece of cloth and you can use this for many things you can take cuttings out of it you can use the whole thing as a background for something else but this is your African mud cloth so hope you like that. This time I promise I'm gone. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.